Welcome back to today's final Splash of Paint, where it's time for us to introduce another versatile SIA professional artist. So sit back and enjoy as we discover the wonderful talent of Claire Warner. I'm going to demonstrate a watercolour. Uh, the name of the picture is Poppies in a Meadow. The key to this picture is the way we use the water with the paints. So I need to use very heavyweight paper for this because I need to do a lot of painting in the first wash. So I'm using Saunders Waterford 300 pound paper. The SAA watercolour paints, which are very vibrant, lovely uh, paints. And I'm using some SAA brushes. The colours I'm using is a lemon yellow, three reds and two blues. I'm going to divide this demonstration into uh, three sections. The first being preparation, important part of the picture. Uh, the second part is the first wash and I will uh, finalise with the details at the end with the poppies. Uh, for the preparation, I've got some lovely reference material here, some photographs I took about seven years ago. And if you see here these lovely little poppy heads, the red is just trying to burst out of the poppies. Uh, I like the way the light is just touching the top of the poppy petals and the poppy seeds. So that is my reference and my inspiration. So I've mixed up my colours, I'm going to wet the paper and off we go. I'm using a nice flat brush. I've masked this with uh, some blue mask, the, the poppy heads, the poppy seeds, and used some masking film for my large poppies uh, in the picture here. So that's nice and wet. I'll just leave that to sink in for a minute. Um, I'd like to use a little bit of cobalt blue to do some sky at the top. I always like to have a little bit of sky. Uh, it helps to make it feel as though you're actually outside and in the, in the wild. So that's my sky. So the first thing I'm thinking about is the distant ground. So I'm thinking all the time grasses, which is why I'm doing this sort of action. So this is my distant background. I'm then into uh, cobalt blue and lemon yellow. So it's a nice sort of grey green, which is pushing all these uh, leaves and grasses back. I'm not worrying about leaving some of the white of the paper, that really doesn't matter. I'm going to put some little, that's just a number two gold brush, I'm going to put some little purple flowers in here. I can see this is already beginning to dry, so in a minute I shall probably give it a spray to keep it wet. There we go. So I'm planning this as I'm going, thinking about colours and where they're sitting next to each other, like the yellow with the purple. So all this is going on my head when I'm painting this picture. Let's put some poppies in here. This is fairly weak, quite a lot of water with this for some poppies that are sitting uh, in the distance. So again, I'm placing them, trying to not make them too even, a little bit random. So these are the poppies that are in the distance. I can already see that's drying, so we'll give it a quick spray with a fine mist spray to keep it nice and wet. The good thing about the fine mist spray is I'm not disturbing anything else that's going on there. Right. Now, again, thinking about the distance here, I'm going to put just a few poppy seeds here in the background. There we go, that's the flowers in the distance. I'm now thinking about the mid-ground, so I'm going to make my paints a little bit stronger. Going into my lightest green, lemon yellow with ultramarine. And I'm pushing down to make all these sorts of leaf shapes. There we go, you can see I'm thinking leaves all the time. There we go, let's just keep that nice and wet. There we go. Right, in with the next green, which is a mid-green. So I've got a little bit more ultramarine in this. And what I want to show you is, as it's lovely and wet, can you see how that's spreading? You're making your foliage, and it's the water that's creating these lovely shapes all the time. Again, let's just keep this nice and wet. Right, it's coming into a slightly stronger green now, a little bit more ultramarine, making these leaves a little bit thicker. And you can see, although I'm using a very small brush, I can get quite a lot of shapes going on here. Just going to have a little bit more filling in here. 
I've also got some little daisies down here which I've masked. So hopefully they'll begin to stand out. There we go. So I'm now thinking about a little bit about the foreground. So I'm going to come back in with some stronger red and just put a few more poppies peeking through these grasses here. You can see stronger paint as I'm thinking about coming forward. There we go. Right, well that's going to take a little bit of time to dry and then we'll carry on with our final stage. I've allowed that picture to dry. It can take, oh gosh, up to an hour because this paper is so heavyweight, uh, it holds the liquid for a long time. So this is a similar version and that's had a chance to dry. I've taken off the masking. So we've got the poppy seeds, the poppy heads, the poppies themselves and a few daisies down here. So I'm now going to concentrate on the flowers in the foreground. So these are going to be stronger. But all the time I'm thinking about my light touching the petals, touching the side of all the flowers here. So this is what I'm going to use is the water. So we go straight into the poppies. So I'm literally painting with water here. So easy to forget when you're painting watercolour that the water is something that is really important to use. I'm dropping the red straight into that water and that's softening the edge here and keeping the light at the top of the petal here. Okay, and we'll do the same for this one underneath, leaving a little gap because I don't want to push anything into there. That's it, so we can keep the white there where the light is just cut, touching the top of the petal. You can see there where the paint's just gone underneath the masking film. I think that's rather nice, actually. It gives it a little bit of uh, colour there. So let's just soften that edge, again using water, always using the water. Add some water there, that's where the light is touching the petal. And we'll just add another petal down there. There's a lovely thing about poppies is they're such random shapes. You don't have to be good at drawing straight lines to do poppies. I'm just going to let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to come in here and drop a little bit into this stem here. And as I do that, can you see how that's spreading underneath? Just creating a shadow underneath the poppy. So let's do the same with this one. There we go. And straight in with that rich red colour. The water is helping that to move around. Crop some water in there just to soften the top. There we go, and the petal underneath. You can see how the light is just catching that. I'm practically using neat pigment here to go into there. I find the cadmium red is a colour that can fade quite easily, so it's good to use a nice strong red. And in with the stalk again, the stem. And can you see that's bleeding up, giving a little bit of a shadow. I don't want that stem to come all the way down. It makes it look very hard if you have long lines. While that's drying for a second, I'm going to put a mauvey colour just at the top of these poppy seeds. That needs to dry. There we go, I've just got three there. And we'll go straight into the last poppy again. Again, I'm going to add the water where I want the light to catch these petals. Again, I'm using a very tiny brush, but because I'm pressing and lifting, I can get a lot of work going on with this brush. Let's get a little more water down there. Just leave a little bit of space where the light's catching. And think uh, when I'm doing this, I'm also painting with water, not just the colours. There we go, and into the green, get the stem there and just touch it, and it's making that shadow underneath. Right, let's get into the poppy heads. I'm using cobalt blue and uh, lemon yellow, very watery, so I can get the light on that side. Let's do this one as well, just give it a chance to dry just a little bit and then come back in with a stronger colour on the right hand side. This is the shadow side. There, you can see where it's just catching the light. It's just adding a little more water that helps that to happen. There we go, so that's poppy heads now. These are the ones where I want that lovely uh, red to be peeking through. 
So I've wet that side, that's the side that the, uh, the light is catching. Okay, in with a darker colour this side. You see how it's very naturally just bleeding in there. It's another one here, hiding. There we go, and again, in with a much stronger colour. This is a very, got very little water with it, this dark green. I'm sure I had another one hiding somewhere, but I can't find it. Let's create one here. There we go. This is the foreground, so I want these flowers to be standing out. Going back in, just lifting the water out. Right, I've got three daisies down here, so I'm going to use lemon yellow for the little tops. And as those are beginning to dry, I'm adding a little bit of red in there to make a warm yellow, and I'm going to just drop that underneath there. There we go. Now, to make those white daisies stand out, I'm going to add a little upside down V. Can you see how that just lifts it off the paper? And just tuck a little bit of dark green under there, make them look 3D, a little rounded. There we go. Right, now as these are damp but not completely wet, I'm coming in with their centres. This is the exciting bit where poppies come to life. So ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make a black. I'm just going to touch the centre there and you can see that all of a sudden becomes a poppy. Well, I'm pleased with that. So I'm just going to do what we were told not to do at school and I'm going to do some scribbling with a rigger. This is what we were not allowed to do, scribble on our paper. But this is the foreground and that's what I'm going to do. There, so pressing and lifting. I've got some grasses going on there. And I've finished. So I'm pleased with that. As I say, if there's anything that you want to know about colours or techniques I use, please do email me. I'll be very happy to answer you and send you some information. Great style, the perfect technique for creating sensational, soft, realistic results. Thanks, Claire. Lovely work. OK, well, before we pack away today's palettes and paints, just got time to dip into this splashy paint post bag to answer a few more of your artistic questions. Let's start off with this one from John Brookin, who asks, Is it possible to use wet in wet techniques using acrylic paint on canvas, or will the colours not bleed properly as they do on paper? Because the canvas is primed, it's not easy to use wet into wet techniques on canvas. Watercolour paper is designed for wet techniques. If you do try it on canvas, it will be a case of trial and error on your part. Most artists use a heavyweight watercolour paper of 300 gram or higher. However, I've seen some people cover canvas with gloss medium and it took the wet into wet acrylic perfectly. But as I say, it's really something to experiment with. And Hazel Castledean says, I've seen you use sponges in your painting. What are they and how do you use them? Well, I can show you this one. I've got a natural sponge there, and they're, they're the best ones to go for. If you do get a natural sponge, look after it, because they are quite hard to get hold of. A natural sponge is normally a piece that's been sliced from a large sponge. You go for the smaller ones and look for something that's quite rough and a little bit uh, fluffy on the ends, and that's great for doing tree effects, texture effects. It's also very good for wetting the actual paper as well. Now, if you pick up the water, squeeze it out, and what you can do with this is you can dampen the actual area that you want to work on. It's probably a bit easier than using a brush because it covers the area quicker, but don't over soak watercolour paper, whatever you do. And then I've got some colours mixed. Now, the best way to use the sponge is to make sure that you wring it out, but it needs to be damp. Get all the water out of it, but it wants to be damp. And if you just find a nice fluffy area, something like that corner on this particular sponge there, we'll pick up some thick-ish watercolour paint, and then you can tap in the damp area and you can see how it gives a nice leaf effect. Now, I'm doing this wet into wet because it gives a slightly soft edge. I've got some burnt sienna there mixed with some aureolin. If I do the same, it's giving a bit of an autumn tinge to the colours there. So you can see how effective it can be for doing leaf effects. There's even a bit of green there, I might as well stick that in. Another advantage is that all the colours actually mix together because I've not cleaned the sponge in between picking them up, so you can see that all the colours do actually mix together nice on the paper. And it's pretty good for doing the uh, sort of mass foliage effect. Now, if I give it a bit of a clean and a bit of a squeeze there, get everything out of it. I've
painted this dry stone wall. I've put some mortar lines and things in there. But if you get a bit of brown or something, a bit, a bit of natural browns or just random colours, it's quite nice just to very gently, I don't know whether you can see that, but I actually tap over the top of a wall and it gives texture to it. Now, quite often what I tend to do when I do this is just tap it on and use my finger just to give it a bit of a smudge and it beds it in. It's also quite nice on a building that you might paint to give that massive stonework effect. And it's an easy way to work. And there you go. Well, that's all we've got time for today, folks. But remember, for more inspirational advice and support on your artistic journey, visit www.sa.co.uk or email us at splashofpaint at sa.co.uk and we'll do our very best to help. In the meantime, join us next week when SAA professional oil and acrylic artist Mike Skidmore demonstrates his simple method for creating straight lines and realistic wood effects. David Hyde shows us what's in his box, and I'll be sharing a Parisian evening with you in my Try Your Hand Up project. So tune in next time for another colourful edition of A Splash of Paint. For a free splash of the bi-monthly paint magazine packed full of stimulating step-by-step -step guides, fantastic features and artistic advice from all your favourite TV artists, visit www.saa.co.uk.